Hi everyone, I'm here with Lexi. She is a alumni of 20, late 2020 or 2021. Yeah, it was January, 2020. Jan that's right. You were one of the, yeah. One of the newest 2020 members or was it 2021? 2021. Oh, I you know what? No, this, this year feels like 2020 still because we did nothing in 2020. So everybody's like, yes. oh, like Ryan's like, oh, remember last year? And I'm like, you mean 2019? And he's like, oh, <laughs> like 2019 to 2021 is like blurred. Yes, it really, I think I am positive. It was January 21. Because I, I had already too. started offering services, which was September of 20. That's why we think it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what you get in, you know, anybody who's watching, you get in this world and it seems like you've been in it forever, right? Yes. Like, and it's like, oh, I've been doing this my whole life. It? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, so okay. Lexi left her job to build her virtual assistant business, but then left America for Central America. And she now lives in Costa Rica, which I have been to twice when I was 13 and 18. So it's been a long time since I've been there, but I'm aging myself. That's okay. So I'm going to let you take it from here and tell okay. everyone about like how this came to be, why you wanted to do it. And then we'll dive into living at Costa Rica. Okay. Should I include the LFP in that? Yeah. Tell us all okay. about LFP. <laughs> okay. So really, okay. I just want to say too, that the job I've been an administrative assistant since I was in college. That was the yeah. job I did for the local YMCA where I lived, um, to get me through school. And I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And I, my husband and I left there to move to the Southern part of Illinois, where I got another job that I, as an administrative assistant, and I, I loved being an administrator. I was too for State Farm and I loved it. I loved it. I didn't yes. have to be licensed, but I got to do, like, I couldn't do all the back end stuff, but I knew everything and anything about insurance, but I loved, I loved the filing. I loved the yes. calling. I loved, it was I love being an admin. I have to be honest though. Sometimes <laughs> I do miss the feeling of an office because yeah. that was one of my oh, favorite yeah. things about that job yeah. Yeah. was my office mates and like going into my boss's office yeah. and like, I don't know. Yeah. And well, like so friends for me, I feel the same way, but I miss the small office. So like I ended up being an executive director, which mm. is like an administrative on steroids. Yes, and I definitely. didn't like having a team of 50. Mm. I didn't, even though I was good at it, I didn't like it. Yeah. I, I did, can't imagine. I, would I just missed, you know, my, the little state farm office I worked for, there was five of us. Yeah. There was five of us and we were like a cute little family and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Yes. And we, we had, had so much parties. fun together and I don't know. I miss, I miss that too. And I would love yeah. to go back to like being a dental administrative assistant or yeah. like someday, like when the kids are in school, I would, or like for a school, like for like an elementary school. Oh, that'd be so fun. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, okay. So I don't miss, this is where I'm going with this mm -hmm. actually. So I'm glad that you said all of that because I really do miss like the family aspect of it however I felt like that was not providing enough yes. fulfillment to balance out what I was yes. being frustrated with in my yes. life I totally 100% agree yeah but it's so mm -hmm. sad right because you love yeah. them and yeah so and also being an assistant is fun because at least the roles that I was in I was always the one that was just like the CEO and then like, here's all their people, but like, I'm over here. Yeah. So like You're not, really, yeah. You're like not part of the pyramid, but you are. Yes. And like, yeah. everybody is like neutral with me and I can just be chill with everybody, you know, perfect role. And so I really do miss that because you, you do have a little bit more of responsibility and, you know, things that you have to take care of when you're a virtual assistant on your own. You do, so yeah. I do miss that kind of carefree aspect of it. Right. But like you said, it doesn't 
yeah, exactly. This is where we're going with this, everybody. So don't like sit here and think, oh, I thought they were, we were supposed to be. This is what the virtual assistant world does. It makes you see the flaws in that, even though you miss the people, even though yes. you miss like certain aspects of it, the virtual assistant world offers everything. Mm -hmm. So like the administrative assistant role that Lexi and I probably shared and had in common, there were just pieces missing and you never felt fulfilled, even though you liked it really weird. And I think that yeah. that's why a lot of people struggle to jump on this ship is because you can't make sense of it until you do it. And then once you do it, it's like, oh, that's why I didn't want to do that anymore. Even though, but it's a part of life that we miss. Of course, of course. Yes. But, spot so that's on. where we're going with this, everybody. Yep. Like, exactly. Hang on. Exactly. <laughs> you just stole the words. Yeah. So the parts that I was not finding fulfillment in were Anytime that someone wanted to go do something, whether it be a concert, whether it be a, you know, of course, with the pandemic, we couldn't really travel a whole lot and whatever, right. but, you know, just in general, say pre-pandemic, when someone asks me to do something, I'm like, man, do I have enough vacation days? Is it worth yeah. up late yeah. and staying two hours later, even though I know I'm not going to do any work in those two hours, I have to sit there anyway. And you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. And then the one thing that really did it in was my mom's birthday. She said, Lexi, I booked a ticket to Miami and I'm going for my birthday by myself. And I would love if you wanted to join me. And I could go, I had enough vacation days to go, but I had to choose between that. And then my family vacation with my mom and uh, my siblings and everything in the summer, I had to choose between the two. And I was so frustrated by that because I was like, I have a, and not that this even, it, I was about to say, I have a college degree. That doesn't even matter. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter. You can still feel this way. But I personally felt I have, you know, I have worked my butt off. I have a college degree. Like, why am I choosing? I right. should be able to, I should be able to go for a few days with my mom to Miami. And then eight months later, go with my family to a beach somewhere. I, I am agree. busting my butt at work, you know? So I went, I went to Miami and I knew when I went to Miami that I was still going to go on that family vacation. And I didn't and you know did. how. Yes. And so I was like, this is it. I'm using the end of my vacation days and I'm going back and I am figuring this out because yeah. I don't want to choose this anymore. So when I came back, um, my husband and I were watching TV and it was actually Steve Harvey, funny enough. Uh, he said, if you're not doing your skills virtually in 2020, if you're not taking them virtually in 2020, you're missing a million dollar opportunity. And I was like, virtually, what are my skills? I'm an assistant. Is a virtual assistant even a thing? I looked it up and sure enough, obviously it's a thing. So enter LFP. Literally the moment I start looking into this, I'm like, this is my dream job. This is what I want. I didn't realize how much I'd miss the office, but I was like, I'm going to start this. And I posted about it on my Facebook, just like it was a babysitting gig. I was like, Hey, if you need any help, let me know. I'm starting to offer services on the side and people bit like crazy because people, the, people didn't know how to start zoom meetings because now they were forced on zoom. People didn't know how to, you know, all this stuff was happening and nobody knew how to move things online. So I really just kind of helped as like a crisis person. For yeah, my but new clients. how cool is, so yeah, tis this, tis every season, right? We come, we enter in these seasons and that's the thing. Like people always say, well, how do I know it's the right time? It is always the right time because you, it doesn't matter when you decide to become a VA. I have family members that are still trying to decide should I do what my friend Kaylee did or should I do what my cousin Kaylee did? And I told them, I said, when you're ready to jump ship, you are going to have abundant opportunities. Yes. Every single VA I talk to it, it's like, I don't know. You can't even explain it. It just, yeah. you end up like you, when you did it, you were like the crisis VA. You helped yeah. everybody figure their shit out mm -hmm. when they needed it. And whether you become a VA today or you become a VA next year, there will be stepping stones 
to get you to where you're supposed to be. And until you experience it, you're not going to understand it. That's why Lexi and I are sitting here like, like you pause because you like don't know the word you want to say. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I knew that that like now I would have totally handled those things completely differently. I definitely yeah. handled them like an amateur, but, but, but you I did was. it and you're here yeah. and who gives a crap? Exactly. You get there, you get there, you get and there. Yeah. This is where like, okay. So I followed before any of this really ever started happening several months prior, I had started really kind of learning about, um, the idea behind manifesting and energy and how, you know, impact impactful my thoughts really are to my day how yeah. my routine is really impactful I knew that people had always said you know like yeah it's you can't things. again it's that thing until you experience it you can't put it into words exactly. and even after you experience it you sound like a crazy person yes and like that's why I feel I was like hesitating to say the word like manifesting but like <laughs> really just, I had yeah. learned about the idea of it and it really set well with me. And it was something I had never considered before. It was a brand new perspective I'd never heard of before. And I was like desperate. So, you know, I was already busting my butt at my day job and then coming home at night, trying to build a website, which I don't know why I spent so much energy on that. I don't even barely use it's, it. Now, hey, you it's know? okay. <laughs> but like, just well, after yesterday, it's stuff. probably good. You have one. Yeah, exactly. For people That's who are another. watching this in the future, yeah. yesterday, um, Facebook and Instagram went down. You remember that day. These are for people who are watching this interview in the future, like 10, 20 yeah. months from now. But yeah, Facebook went down and the world freaked out. I personally loved it, but. Um. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely unique. <laughs> people were like, oh, um, like, Clubhouse was popping notifications like crazy. Yeah, yeah. 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 So manifesting it, that me too, like, but I didn't understand manifesting until I worked for a manifesting coach. And then oh. I was sitting there and I was like, I am <laughs> realizing the last freaking four years of my life. Like when I had started working for, so that was God, that's seven years. Oh my God. Seven years of four years ago. So, or seven years ago for four years. Yeah. Any insane, but yeah, it just, I always knew that this was going to be part of my life too, but I didn't know how I was going to get there until LFP showed me the way. Ex yes. Yeah. It's like, you're just speaking. Like, I didn't even know that those were the words in my brain, but you're just like, yeah, saying them. It's and that's, so what's really cool about LFP. Like we become like this big family and we finish each other's sentences. <laughs> Yeah, for real. So, okay. So I learned about energy. <gasps> my cousin was really big into all of this yeah. stuff. That's and, I had some, and I had some questions about some things I didn't really understand. Um, and so I asked her, like, I feel guilty about this. You know, I feel guilty about wanting this. It was money. And I, it was, I feel like I should want other things more than I want money. And that's a whole like other tab opening. But um, she introduced me to a person that I started following named Amanda Francis. And through Amanda Francis, she shared Rebecca's story to her or Rebecca's post or something to her own story and that was like three days after I had learned about energy in general so I started like kind of looking into it and you know seeing and so it was the first thing I saw and I love travel it was my dream to travel somewhere <laughs> and I just saw the the name wanderlust virtual assistant and I was like Okay, who's this person? And then the second thing I learned, uh, first thing I learned about her is that she lived in Canada, Rebecca. And then the second thing I learned was that she brewed her own beer. And I was like, who is this person? They're, you know, like I am so intrigued by this person. What are they? And so then I just start, I looked at some of Rebecca's stories and I was like, okay, I have to meet this person. I had looked at a few other virtual assistant pages, but nothing really like intrigued me like that because of the mm -hmm. way that I found it and like the things that had to happen for me to find it. Right. You mm -hmm. know? So I messaged Rebecca and I am very interested in the following January's LFP. I'm not sure on the commitment until I knew the price. I think most people really related with that. I was a bit worried I wasn't going to be able to afford it. Um, you know, things that happen when you look into getting a coach or a mentor for the first time. And 
So I reach out to her and I'm like, okay, I think I'm really interested. I started going to the hangouts, like the free hangouts. Yes. I remember you in the free hangouts. That was so yeah, fun. Getting that to was really there. fun. I really enjoyed those. Mm-hmm. And um, then I started getting clients. I, I just started getting a lot of clients and I was very overwhelmed. I didn't have a system in place. I didn't have invoices created. I didn't have contracts made. I didn't have anything. And I messaged Rebecca and I was like, I don't think I can wait until January. Like I am considering investing in something else because I need access now. And she said, let's get on a call. And so we got on a call before I had invested in anything. And after literally 45 minutes, I just felt calm and I felt ready. And I felt even though I wasn't organized, that it was going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And it didn't like it was more than enough to hold me over to wait until the cohort started in January because yeah. I was like whatever this energy is like I'm learning about this energy whatever this one is I want it yeah ever since I joined I've learned so like obviously we learn everything in the courses or whatever from the mentoring and coaching mm-hmm. and the community but I really was like I think like I can do, I can do, I I can have location freedom. I can quit my job. Like starting this, I can, I can do it. And I know that these girls are going to hold me accountable for this. And so I told them that I wanted to quit my job by a certain day. And they just like amped me up so much. I quit a month before that. Like it just was, it was just like, not even a thing. I was just like, yeah, naturally I I quit my job today. (laughs) And we all, you know what I mean? It just, I would not have been able to do that without multiple people believing in the energy that was going Mm -hmm. to continue carrying me forward after that leap. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what happened. And then I told my husband, I was like, I don't want to stay here. Like if we can work online, let's go somewhere else. And he said, we went to Costa Rica and fell in love with it. He was like, well, we can afford this house here for at least a year. Why not try it? That's awesome. And I just love that because you can always come back. Yes. Mm -hmm. We did bring our two cats. So coming back would be a bit difficult with them, but we could if we had to. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So what do you love most about working in Costa Rica? Mm, I love that. Well, Okay, so this sounds silly, but in the United States, one thing I actually really miss is McDonald's. I love McDonald's. I know, I know. I don't know if you guys all just saw my face because I'm pretty sure Zoom makes it so you just see one of us, but I totally just gave her the most disgusted look. (laughs) I know, I know. And I'm like, I really am. I really care about my health. Yeah, I know. But you, there's things that you, I mean, we all have our indulgence, dude. I can't stop eating M&M's. So, and they say- they say one M M&M and M takes a football field length to walk off. So, what? Yeah. Whoa. Eat wow. all the McDonald's you want, and I'll eat all the M and M's I want. Dude. Okay. Well, I did limit myself, but I just so when I would really want a snack, if I really felt like I earned something good, I'd be like, I'm gonna go get a McDonald's Coke. But here, it's like there's like fresh fruit and vegetables, just like pickup trucks right down Mm -hmm. the road here. And I can just take 50 cents and go buy a banana or buy a, yeah. like, now I do remember McDonald's though in, in high school. And when I was 13, of course I ate at McDonald's. Everybody does. Um, especially when you're young, it's so good. Um, I do remember like being on the road in Costa Rica, traveling and doing all these things with my class but I, I was so tired of chicken and rice and, and, oh, yeah. and I'm a big cereal person. Like I just want some milk and cereal. And yeah. I remember not so much when I was 13, I didn't care. And my mom says she doesn't really remember, but when I was 18 and went, I, I bitched about it. I want some freaking cereal and some cow's milk. Like I want my freaking yes. whole milk and some lucky charms. And, and I remember when we are our last night, we, well, the first night we always got there. And then the set, the, the night before we got on our plane, we always stayed in San Jose because that's where the airport is. Right. And, um, we would get McDonald's. I, every time before my, before our flight left, I would get McDonald's, but there was like, you'd squeeze it. No grease, like the oh. purest of pure McDonald's I have 
ever had in my life. So have you had McDonald's in Costa Rica yet? No, I haven't let myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I mean, but it's not American gross good. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I really yeah. want to. We've been to San Jose a few times and I really I'm intrigued. I want to go. You but... should try it. It's not the same. I know. And you know what? Yeah. You'll probably feel healthier eating it. <laughs> Pro- maybe, maybe. You know what? That's. I have to try it now. That's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you do. Um. That's funny. You miss McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. That's such but an American do. thing to say. <laughs> I know. I People from know. other countries that are watching this are probably like, "Oh God." I know. I know. They're probably like, oh, "Okay, gross." No, but I would say that I my <laughs> one of my favorite things about here is the food like I love it it is I love a roast and pollo so I love the chicken and rice but maybe I just haven't got sick of it yet yeah yeah I I just I don't know I was young though so like looking at it from being now I'm 30 to when I was 18 it's just like obviously my perspective has changed on a lot of that stuff and mine too yeah eat chicken all the time here like now but like yeah so that's awesome. Um, and they do have a do ton you, of cereal on the shelves now. Do they? Yeah. See, everything's changed. Like literally I'm aging myself, you guys. I went when I was 13 and 18 and I'm now 30. Like that was, that's how long it's been since I've been in Costa Rica. My mom goes every year, but with her students, but I have not gone yet. And I should have gone as a chaperone before I had my kids because now I just, and I do want to take my kids. Um, they're just not, I don't think they're quite old enough. I want to wait so they can remember. Like, I they're don't sure. remember anything when I was That's three. A big trip to not remember. Yeah. yeah. Like, we'll just visit the States while they're so little. And then, Heck yeah. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, that is just so neat that you just like packed up and you and your husband were like, let's go try this. Like, that is just. Yeah awesome. So, and I, I hate like relating everything to the pandemic, but it is, I mean, in reality is the world we live in. So how has that, has it affected your business with moving to Costa Rica or what if, what's it like living in Costa Rica, um, with different rules in the United States? And I know all the States even have different rules, but like, is that affecting your business at all? Or is it helping it? Like, for people who want to travel and do what you do, what's kind of some measures that you've had to take in, have to take? I see. It's morning. Yeah, (laughs) no, I totally understand. (laughs) So I would say that personally, I don't know if it's just because I started in the pandemic, but I have not necessarily noticed all of my clients are people that I think would have hired me and would have me be doing the exact same thing before the pandemic. Yeah. However, I will say that a lot of my clients are wedding niched. So weddings have been totally buku, like for right, the last right. year. They've been screwed so, over. Yes. For sure. Like inquiry season is all wonky. Mm-hmm. Like people are not having the commitments in contracts that they normally have because people don't want to commit to dates right now, especially with things going back up. You know what I mean? So I think that that has really impacted my clients a lot. I don't know that specifically that has affected me from my client side. Now, when it comes to being here in Costa Rica, um, here, the rules, when it comes, I was just back in the States for a wedding. And so I would say that the rules are, are quite similar here. Um, Here they have sinks outside of everything. You have to wash your hands before you go into stores and restaurants. That's and really cool. Like yeah. instead of hand sanitizer, they have sinks. They well, they also have hand sanitizer, and some people opt for that. But most people wash their hands, and um, masks are required in every store and restaurant. But most people are outside, like yeah, they're outside yeah, doing things it's all the time. beautiful there. It's not cold. It's not too yeah. hot. It's like a good mix. Yes. Or they're up in the rainforest and they're, you know, they're getting really, really, really good amounts of oxygen and right. Vitamin D. Yeah. You got to be outside. You got to take care of your health in so Mm -hmm. many different forms and ways. Of course they're doing that there. And a lot of people are, you know, of course, opting for fruits and vegetables other rather than McDonald's. Right. Right. So, I mean, things like that are really helpful, but I would say when it comes to my business, I don't 
know if it would be different had I started before the pandemic, right. but I would say I haven't noticed. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. It's just, we really, I was really excited when I reached out to Lexi and she, she wanted to take me up on this interview because I mean, it's your, like the perfect person to, in, I, all of the interviews, all of the interviews are unique and perfect and all of our stories match LFP. But like you said, wonder lust VA, you wanted to build a business so you could go travel and you literally left your job or you started your virtual assistant business, left your job, and then you freaking left and moved to a different country and you're going to be living there for a year. Like if that doesn't scream wonder lust VA, I don't know what does. And like, for me, I wanted to do it to be home with my kids but also be able to travel with my, and I'm showing that this year, you know, we actually have started traveling more and I've been able to take my work on the road and it's been so nice. nice. And so now I'm starting to like be more relatable to the Wanderlust brand, but like, it's like Lexi literally left her. You like Rebecca, Rebecca literally yeah. got her clients and she's like, I'm going to Europe. I went to Greece, like she left and like planned all these trips and like literally did that. And there's just so many ways that we connect with LFP. Yeah. Like, you know, you, it was the Wanderlust. It was Rebecca drinking beer. You joined our evening call, like hangouts. Like we all connect in our different way and really shadowing that and showcasing that is just really neat. And that's why I really want it. My husband just shut off the light. So sorry if my like lights went down babe <laughs> yeah <laughs> gotta have light for my video um <laughs> I didn't notice you didn't notice I no. sudden it just like went dark in front of me <laughs> right um, the one spot that you needed to <laughs> right just make sure I don't have like too many shadows um but thank you for being here today and showcasing all of that and showcasing our viewers that this is all possible and such a unique story and we really you. appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, really love that I've been able to join this community. I think yeah. you all have, like all of you that are kind of part of the team, I think have something so similar that just ignites people to want to chase what they feel like they were called to do. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's traveling. It doesn't matter if it's a right. stay at home mom. It doesn't right. matter. If right. We all are connected in a specific way through the V through the Wonderless brand in, in yeah. so many different ways. It's, it's amazing. So yeah, it's very inspiring. So I'm glad to be a part of it. Thanks.